Hi, my name is Jerry Coulter. I am the patron of an organisation called Dorset Victim Support. And we are an organisation that supports victims of the Dorset authorities, in particular the Dorset Police. I urge you strongly, do not vote for me. He's not interested in his constituents at all. Selling off the National Health Service for Profit, full list of MPs with links to private healthcare firms. Richard Drax, Dorset South MP, received £14,000 in a series of donations from Derek Luckhurst, Chief Executive and owner of care home group Agincare. This is Richard Drax speaking in a parliamentary debate on the 10th of February 2015. I pay tribute to the Chief Constable of Dorset, Debbie Simpson and our Police and Crime Commissioner, Martin Underhill, both of whom do a superb job. Yes, I am here to stand up for my police force, and I will probably say things that are unpalatable to the government, but I hope I shall say them in a balanced way, based on the evidence and the fact that I have worked closely over the past five years with the Dorset Police Force, in part, I shall speak personally about what I have seen and heard. Dorset Police Force has had an appalling history. I give credit to Martin Baker, Debbie Simpson's predecessor. Many people in Dorset are extremely concerned about the involvement of Freemasonry, especially in relation to public office. In other words, in the council, the police and other authorities in Dorset. The Dorset Police and Crime Commissioner, Martin Underhill, is a member of Rowan Lodge, number 3180, Bournemouth Masonic Lodges. Most people in Dorset expect people that hold public office that are the checks and balances in Dorset to be free from Freemasonry, to be independent of Freemasonry, especially when Masons are under an oath to protect a brother Mason at all costs. Before he was elected in a very low turnout election, Underhill came down to Dorset after retiring as a senior police officer in Sussex where he was facing allegations of misconduct immediately before his retirement from the Sussex Constabulary. The incumbent Chief Constable of Dorset, Debbie Simpson, had allegations reported to her that the Professional Standards Department are doing nothing about the homophobic misconduct of Dorset police officers. In fact, the Professional Standards Department are just covering it up or lying about what took place with these gentlemen. Chief Constable Debbie Simpson will not even address these issues. She supposedly delegates it. She delegates it back to the officers in the Professional Standards Department who have got the allegations of misconduct levelled against them. It's like asking Ronald Cray to investigate Reggie. But this is what happens in Dorset Police, especially with the ACPO officers and especially with Chief Constables. They have a long history of urinating in the same pot. 
In fact, Martin Underhill has had the allegations against the Chief Constable for failing to deal with this reported to him. But as with others, Underhill, is, along with everybody else in Dorset, is all urinating in the same pot. Our organisation has constantly lobbied MPs and um, senior civil servants and others um, in public office in Dorset and outside Dorset and in Westminster and in the Home Office about the serious misconduct in Dorset. You can extrapolate that against most police forces in this country. Some are better than others, but the majority of them basically are dishonest. When things go wrong, they do nothing but lie, cover up, push it into civil litigation where they can lie and perjure themselves, knowing full well that judges will not want to go against them and it's easier for them to rule against the victims than to give them justice. The whole judicial system in this country is in a mess and you, the taxpayers, are paying for it. This is the Labour Party reporting on Richard Drax's comments that were homophobic about teaching non-homophobia to school children. The media reported on this and Drax quickly took it down. It goes like this, 2 plus 2 equals gay. Yes, if you can believe it, homosexuality will be on the curriculum for students studying maths, geography and science. According to the Sunday Telegraph, children as young as four could be included. Apparently, these lessons to celebrate the gay community are not compulsory and schools will be left to decide. This plan is ludicrous and pushes political correctness to new bounds. I would have thought raising educational standards and teaching our children to read, write and add up is far more important than imposing questionable sexual standards on those too young to understand their equality czars. This understandably drew protest from people on social media, the local Dorset press and the national press. Richard Drax does not see any relationship between racist discrimination and homophobic discrimination. Our marriage was once illegal too. Richard Drax says that racism isn't as bad as religiously justified homophobia. Horrendous! BBC News Politics. Tory MP Richard Drax removes gay lesson blog entry after complaint. An MP has had to rewrite an entry on his blog after saying plans to teach children about homosexuality would impose questionable sexual standards. This is the original Richard Drax blog that he removed, but here it is still available in Google Cache. This is the Dorset Echo coverage of the news story of the homophobic slurs by Richard Drax, Dorset South MP, which received 73 comments. We feature a few of those comments after this. I'm not gay, but I too was offended by Richard Drax's comments, as I suspect was anyone with half a heart and an ounce of intelligence. Questionable sexual standards? In my opinion, I agree that teaching children as young as four about any aspects of sex is starting too early. Why and what do they really need to know at this age? I don't think that there is any plan to teach any aspect of sex to four-year-olds, but instead to introduce the concept of same-sex couples in the same way as mixed-sex couples will obviously be discussed, such as in reading books. I don't see how anyone could object to this, particularly as children in the class may have same-sex parents and so this approach will make them feel included. 
I think this time Richard Drax has missed the point and set up a straw man argument. Whilst it is a good idea that he has a blog, I think that he could benefit from taking time to reflect before posting in order to make some more thoughtful and considered posts. If you choose to send your children to a denominational school to uphold traditional values, be they Judeo-Christian, Islamic or any other, that's absolutely fine. I would like to think that the traditional values being instilled in your kids are those of tolerance, respect and understanding, exactly those that the scheme in question is trying to advance. To be homosexual is no less ordinary than it is to be fair-haired, nor does an individual have any more control over it. Fortunately, modern Britain, since the last Conservative government was in office, has come to realise this. But homophobia is still a serious issue, and it still kills. Drax's insensitive and prejudiced comments that described homosexuality as a questionable sexual standard supposes that there is a hierarchy to sexual preference. There isn't. As for the issue of equality, if you can point me in the direction of a well-evidenced history of discrimination and subjugation of heterosexuals by bisexual or homosexuals, we can talk about the idea of straight parades. Have to agree with right-wing troll it's not just the gay community who were offended by these remarks. Also agree with James Spider. Mr Drax has caused a problem by himself by reacting to what was an overblown story in the Sunday Telegraph suggesting that four-year-olds were going to be taught about homosexuality. In truth, there are some resources available for teachers who want to make use of them in lessons which include examples of same-sex couples as well as heterosexual couples. The suggestion that young children are going to be force-fed a celebration of homosexuality is highly misleading. However, another interesting point is the speed with which Mr Drax has attempted to retract his comments, whilst pretending it was a member of the public who contacted him. Surely it is more likely that the Conservative Party hierarchy were on the phone to him very quickly. Mr Drax has claimed in the past that he would be his own man and not bow to the party leadership. That claim looks a little fragile in the light of this affair. Peter Reynolds says, Richard Drax is doing a miserable job in South Dorset he is completely out of touch with the concerns of ordinary people and only interested in his Westminster career, not his constituents. Even as a Tory, it is clear to me that Jim Knight was a far better constituency MP. Drax is high-handed and arrogant. His only charms are effective at first, but soon wear off when the lack of any substance is exposed. Everyone will have seen the coverage of Jim Starr's tank chair recently. Do you know that Richard Drax has simply ignored all of Jim's pleas for help with the DVLA? His assistant Jane Rapson is also terribly rude on the telephone and refuses to book Jim or me an appointment at Drax's surgery. I have now written more than eight emails and letters to Drax on various subjects which have been ignored. Where has Drax been in all the furor over the roadworks? Has he done anything at all to represent the interests of his constituents? I have now written to Baroness Warsey, chairman of the Tory party, because, of course, there is no procedure for complaining about MPs. All Drax wants is a title to go with his 12,000 acres and the kudos he will get during the Olympics will no doubt help that. We must make sure that he is not re-elected. The people of South Dorset, gay or straight, disabled or not, 
deserve an MP who cares about them. I would even go so far as to vote Labour to ensure Drax isn't re-elected, and I never thought I would say that. Yet more mainstream media coverage of Richard Drax's homophobic and bigoted comments. There is so many that it would take several documentaries to cover them all, and we have other issues to deal with now in respect of his misogyny. This is a letter from Dr. Michael Halls, the Chief Executive of a Dorset and Devon LGBT organisation called the Intercom Trust. Dear Mr. Drax, I was disappointed and dismayed to read the comments in your blog on inclusive lesson plans. 2 plus 2 equals gay, and I regret that I do not find the qualification of your original comments that you posted yesterday very helpful. I think there are some serious misunderstandings here, misunderstandings which could seriously disadvantage many of your own constituents in South Dorset. As the Chief Executive Officer of the Intercom Trust, I suggest it would be a very good and positive move for both of us if we were to meet at your offices or our own office in Dorset or if you like here at our main office in Exeter. Any education on any topic but especially on a sensitive topic like this should be age appropriate. I suspect that this far you and I are in agreement but at both primary and secondary level Children and young people need sensible, age-appropriate information to give them a background understanding of difference and diversity, including the fact that, for instance, some of their peers have two mums or two dads. There are some very good lessons available from various sources that provide exactly this kind of resource without crossing any boundaries into age-inappropriate material. The benefits of giving children and young people a clear and fact-based understanding of difference are clear. For example, too many homophobic, transphobic, racist and other crimes and too much domestic abuse is committed by young people who have not learned how to respect other people and understand the natural range of differences in society. However, the word that stands out most worryingly from your blog is questionable. I deeply regret that you did not withdraw or apologise for that deplorable term in the remarks you posted yesterday. I am convinced that it would be of shared benefit if you and I could meet to discuss these issues as they affect people within your constituency. I deny that the word could possibly have been appropriate as you used it, but I am very happy to be questioned myself, particularly about why it has been rightly found so very offensive, both amongst constituents of yours and further In this appealed. blog entry, which is still up on Richard Drax's blog on his website, he writes about writing to the Prime Minister David Cameron opposing gay marriage legislation. You have to be homophobic if you want to deny homosexuals their human rights of equality. Despite protests from 500 local residents in the constituency where Richard Drax lives in South Dorset, he received planning permission from the corrupt Dorset County Council to go ahead with a several thousand acre solar farm on his property. Now we come to the infamous Richard Drax, Dorset MP, the Tory MP Petticoat Rail. What right-minded woman would want to be a British politician? As the Tory MP Richard Drax spitefully describes David Cameron's promotion of female MPs as the Knight of the Petticoats and tokenism.
Again, people started their own blogs and wrote to him. The charming Mr. Drax has written a blog in which he suggested that female MPs have been promoted too soon. He said it would have been wiser for them to get used to the shallow end of politics by serving as MPs rather than venturing out of their depth. He suggested that they have been promoted because they are women and a quota needs to be filled. The MP Richard Drax, page three gives the girls a job, remarks haunt him at Prime Minister's questions. David Cameron has been challenged after one of his MPs allegedly claimed page three was a national institution providing jobs for the girls. In the Telegraph they ask, why does a Tory MP think that getting your tits out is a national institution? This is a remarkable organisation in Dorset, Dorset High. They give residents in Dorset and further afield the opportunity to publish their own articles and vent their frustrations and feelings. Your defence of page three, Mr Drax, suggests your inadequacies go a lot further than I feared. BBC News Dorset Ancestors of Dorset MP Richard Drax on Slavery Database A Dorset MP's ancestors received compensation when the slave trade was abolished, new research has revealed. South Dorset Tory MP Richard Drax is descended from John Sawbridge Earl Drax who was awarded £4,293, 12 shillings and sixpence worth three million pounds today for 189 slaves. We also hope that Underhill will go through the ballot box. We also hope Mike Penning will go through the ballot box and others who have failed victims and who have been drawing their salaries only to be concerned with their own agenda. This is a DVSO documentary video. Thank you for listening. Please act on it. The British police are the best in the world. I don't believe one of these stories I've heard about them raining gay bars for no reason at all. Lining the customers up by the wall. Picking out people, knocking them down Resisting arrest as they're kicked on the ground Searching their houses and calling them queer I don't believe that sort of thing happens here You don't have to be gay to sing on this chorus But it helps To be gay, sing if you're happy that way. Hey, sing if you're glad to be gay, sing if you're happy that way. Being a lesbian's wonderful fun, you ain't fit to mother a daughter or son. There's no news in gay news, our last magazine. But they still find excuses to call it obscene Read how disgusting we are in the press The Evening News and the Sunday Express Molesters of children, corrupters of youth It's there in the paper, it must be the truth So try and sing to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Hey Sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Have you heard the story about Peter Wells Who one day got arrested and dragged to the cells For being in love with a guy of 18 
The vicar found out they'd been having a scene The magistrate sent him for trial by the crown He even appealed but they still sent him down He was only mistreated a couple of years Cause even in prison they look after the queers Better believe it Sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Hey Sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way And sit back and watch As they close down our clubs Arrest us for meeting And raid on our pubs Make sure your boyfriend's at least 21 And if you're a lesbian don't be a mum Lie to your workmates Lie to your folks Put down the queens And tell anti-queer jokes Gay lips ridiculous Join their laughter The buggers are legal now What more are they after? Sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Hey, sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way One more time Sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Hey, sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy this way